I've always wanted to look at this Vesda 144th scale modern helicopters, and I finally succumbed and bought the MI-24 Hind kit. So today, join me in an unboxing where we peer inside and see what a small scale Vesta helicopter kit looks like. This is 7403's Vesta's 144th scale Mi-24 Hind helicopter. The kit is designed for Vesta's Hot War Wargame, but it's also usable in other tabletop miniatures wargames. The kit builds the Mi-24V version, known in the West as Hind E. It was the major production version of the Hind with over 1500 produced. This is the snap fit kit, so technically you don't need any glue for assembly. This is a common feature of Vesta's wargaming kit range. I'm not sure that anyone doesn't glue these kits, but you can assemble them that way if you like. As is common with Vesta kits, the box art doesn't always match the kit. The box shows the helicopter fitted with the later shielded IR exhaust outlets, but these aren't represented on the actual kit. There also seems to be some sort of countermeasures on the fuselage side aft of the wings. These aren't on the kit either. If we look at the back of the box, there are three views of a completed kit, including one on the flight stand. The box tells us that the kit is 12 cm long and consists of 29 parts. As you can see in the completed kits, there are no exhaust covers or fuselage countermeasures launchers. The kit plastic actually represents an earlier version. The kit includes parts to build one helicopter, one flight stand and a decal sheet. In an ironic and funny twist, the download link for the game card you need to play Hot War takes you to a Russian porn site. Zvezda lost control of this URL some time ago. If I can find an updated link, I'll post it in the description below. Let's look at some history. The Mi-24 Hind helicopter doesn't really have a Western equivalent. It's sometimes termed an assault helicopter, combining the role of gunship, attack helicopter and troop transport in one large airframe. Entering service in 1972, the Hind design used many components from the earlier Mi-8 hip transport helicopter. In the Mi-24, designer Mikhail Mill tried to combine an infantry transport with an aircraft that could also provide heavy-duty fire support. The Hind is powered by twin turboshaft engines driving a single large five-bladed rotor. A pair of mid-mounted stub wings provide additional lift and stability, as well as acting as weapon mounts. The Hind can carry an array of weapons including rockets, anti-tank missiles, bombs, gun pods and even AA missiles for self-defence. It also mounts a cannon, either a multi-barrel Gatling cannon on a flexible barbette or twin-barrel cannons fixed firing forward. Early versions of the Hind had a greenhouse-style canopy. Later versions had a redesigned forward fuselage with separate cockpit sections for the gunner and pilot. The cockpit is armoured to improve survivability against ground fire. Hinds have a long operational history, serving with dozens of nations and in numerous conflicts. Ground troops appreciate that the Hind can loiter over a combat area providing support, rather than fixed-wing aircraft which are limited to a few passes. The Mi-24 is still in widespread service. Russia recently overturned a decision to replace their Hinds, instead starting an upgrade program to keep them in service. Let's look at the plastic. The parts come on three sprues of olive green plastic, plus a flight stand sprue and a clear sprue. This plastic is the new, harder styrene plastics Vesta moved to in this range. This is easier to cut and sand and will hold paint better. Mouldings are crisp and there's very little flash. There is an OK level of surface detail for a wargaming piece, however detail is perhaps moulded a little shallow overall. At this scale it would be nicer to have stronger relief to make things like doors, hatches and panel lines stand out a bit more. This first sprue has the lower and port side fuselage parts and the undercarriage. There are optional parts to model the wheels either down for a landed aircraft or raised in flight. The lower nose piece has the Gatling gun barbette moulded into it. The gun barrel is very thin so make sure you don't break this during assembly. The undercarriage parts are also pretty delicate. Svesda moulds all these small parts scale accurate, unlike some other wargaming manufacturers. So that's something to keep in mind both during assembly and during table use if you use these as wargaming miniatures. This second sprue has the starboard hull piece and the one piece rotor assembly. 
Having the rotor molded as a single piece is great and should make it quite durable. There are no joins anywhere to form weak points. There are quite a few sprue attachment points here, so take a bit of care cutting it free. The final sprue is mostly wings and weapons. The weapon hard points are moulded integral with the winglets. Each wing has three pylons and there are nice big keyed mounting pins. This will prevent you installing the weapons the wrong way around. Speaking of weapons, you seem to get two UPK-23 gun pods, two freefall bombs and two twin 86 spiral anti-tank missiles. I'm not sure about the bombs. These are either 500 kilogram conventional general purpose bombs or cluster bombs. This is a bit of an unusual weapons loadout. Heinz most often mounted 57mm rocket pods and anti-tank missiles, but I understand the bomb and gun pod combination was common in Afghanistan. This clear sprue has the one-piece cockpit, as well as window glass for the passenger windows. The flight stand is common to all Svesta aircraft kits in this scale. It works well enough if you model the chopper in flight. The decal sheet is pretty generic, just some red stars, yellow tail rotor warning flashes and yellow tactical numbers. The other thing in the box is a single instruction sheet. On one side it talks about the hot war game in Russian and English, and on the other it has a set of instructions. Assembly looks pretty straightforward, and the only real options are modelling the wheels up or down. So that's a look inside the box at Svezda's 144th scale Mi-24 kit. This is a wargaming miniature rather than a scale model, and some of that is reflected in the design choices. That's not a criticism, just an acknowledgement of the purpose of the kit. Parts are generally sharp and well moulded. As with a number of the Svezda kits at this scale, I would prefer the surface detail and a bit stronger relief, but that's not a deal breaker. The weapons loadout on the kit is a bit surprising. I would have expected the more common rocket pods rather than the bombs and gun pods option. It is a 144th scale kit. This channel is mainly about kits for Team Yankee and helicopters in Team Yankee are 1 100th scale. This makes this Svesta kit significantly smaller than a Battlefront one. They won't match on the table so you can't have a mix of hind kits from these manufacturers. But the Svesta hind is a nice little kit and the smaller helicopter model might be easier to store and transport to and from games. I've certainly seen them deployed on the table in Team Yankee games and they look fine. Unfortunately, the Hot Wars Vesta kits don't have the advantage their World War kits do. Price. The modern kits are roughly twice the price of the World War II kits, which means they cost about the same as other manufacturers' offerings. Overall, this is a nice kit. It looks like it will build up well and be a nice wargaming piece. The Hot War game system is defunct, but these will work fine for other miniatures wargames like Battlegroup Northag, Team Yankee, or Seven Days to the River Rhine. But without a price advantage, there's no compelling reason to choose this over other manufacturers' kits for those games. Anyway, thanks for joining me for a look at Svesda's Mi-24 Hind kit. I hope you enjoyed getting a look inside the box. Svesda also do an AH-64 Apache for the Americans. Maybe I should pick up one of those for a look soon. See you next time.